series today we are going to discuss a very very important and a very common topic that is usually been asked and the concepts needs to be absolutely precise for that and that is going to be hernia so my discussion predominantly will deal around you know how do you look at the hernia and what basically is a hernia is how do you categorize it how does the patient present to you and what is the reason for that particular presentation as well right now in order to understand this i will just play a a small video so that we get oriented to what we are looking at in terms of hernia now this is one of my patient i i call him a very peculiar patient because when you look at this uh, now this guy has multiple hernias right now if i just play the video across you'll be able to understand it just now you can see multiple swellings are popping out there are multiple components here you will see that the hernia present at various size now i want you to look at this particular video that has been demonstrated here and my objective is to identify or i i want you to identify how many hernias can you actually see in this patient one hernia i've been reducing right across here this is one you'll see another hernia on the contralateral side one more hernia on the surface so there are multiple swellings which are present now i want you to list out and tell me how many hernias can you see right so this is this patient i met him when i was in my residency uh, i happened to you know capture this video now you can see right amazingly you know component which are present now before we move any further before we move any further let's have a small discussion about the component of hernia that we are talking about so when i say hernia we say that hernia is basically an outpouching of the abdominal viscera through an anatomical weakness in the abdominal wall as simple as that now my question is what are these components now just for the sake of understanding let's say this is the representation of the patient let's say this happens to be the representation of the patient this happens to be the pelvis let's say this is the anterior superior iliac spine this is the pubic tubercle this is the pubic symphysis and you see this happens to be the pubic bone the contralateral side you'll see the same component as well which is in this particular component right this is the pubic bone that we have been talking about now when you look at this whole component this is the umbilicus this happens to be zephy sternum let's say this is the costal margin that we are going to deal on the either side this line which is right in the center this is what we call it as what is this line this line that you can see right in the center is what we call it as linea alba and right on the lateral side you will see the line which is your linea semilunaris right so you have two lines which are present one is your linea alba another one is your linea semilunaris right now just for the sake of understanding let's say this is the inguinal ligament that you are talking about which is going to be from the anterior superior iliac spine to that of your pubic tubercle that is going to be present now the hernias are the swelling which can pop out from any component based upon from where they pop out i can actually list the different variants of hernia that are present for example let's say if i'm talking about a hernia that is going to pop out let's say the hernia that is going to pop out from here there's a hernia that is going to pop out from here there'll be hernia which will be present from here there'll be hernia that you'll be seeing from this component there'll be hernia which is here there'll be hernia that is present here and sometimes let's say there is this previous surgical incision that is present right let's say patient underwent a previous open cholecystectomy and now you see there's a swelling that is popping out from here as well on the posterior aspect you can see a swelling that is going to pouch out from here then if you take this as the representation of the umbilicus let's say this is the umbilicus that you're talking about right and the swelling is arising from here now in some times you can see a swelling that is going to arise at this particular site as well so there are different sites that i've mentioned which have the potential of presenting to you as the herniating site so all these dots that i've put no these are the herniating site so when you look across this the one that is going to present at the level of the inguinal ligament is going to be your inguinal hernia nothing spectacular about it right this is your inguinal hernia right below it on the medial aspect you will see there is going to be your femoral hernia 
then you see a swelling that is going to pop out on the medial aspect of the upper thigh this happens to be your obturator hernia so just based upon the site i now have an idea that we have three different swellings which will be present in the inguinal region or below that level one is going to be your inguinal hernia one is going to be your femoral hernia another one is going to be your obturator hernia then you see a hernia that is going to be pop out from the midline below the level of umbilicus this is what we call it as the hypogastric hernia this is your hypogastric hernia now one that is going to pop out from the umbilicus this is what will be called as the umbilical hernia this will be referred to as the umbilical hernia and one that presents in this region this is your epigastric hernia this happens to be your epigastric hernia now to avoid any sort of confusion the hernia that is going to arise through the linea alba right right in the center all these three put together is what we call it as a category of ventral hernia this is what we call it as the ventral hernia right so the epigastric hernia the umbilical earlier we used to also have a paraumbilical hernia where you know the umbilicus used to form one of the component of the defect but now the paraumbilical hernia or the umbilical hernia is categorically called as umbilical hernia next you have the hypogastric hernia which is going to be on the under surface below the level of umbilicus but right in the midline that is going to be your linea alba right now one that you see is present on the linea semilunaris one that is going to be present to you at the level of the linea semilunaris below the level of umbilicus we say below or at the level of arcuate line this is what we call it as the spigelian hernia this is what we call it as the spigelian hernia and one that is present on the lateral side right on the lateral aspect this is going to be our lumbar hernia this happens to be your lumbar hernia right so we had a video that was played just before it and i gave you an objective that what are the different forms of hernias that you can actually look at it and these are the sites that you have to keep in picture right so going back to our patient i want you to write on the comments that what are the different hernias that you see in that particular patient now before we move on i would like to go and discuss about one of the most important components of the hernia and that is going to be your inguinal hernia so we're talking about the inguinal hernia now all those who thought that they know the concept of inguinal hernia they do understand inguinal hernia let's have a simple discussion on that so that we understand the basic concept behind the inguinal hernia now in order to understand the inguinal hernia the first thing that you need to understand is the basic anatomy of the inguinal canal now in order to understand the inguinal canal let's say this happens to be your anterior superior iliac spine this is the pubic arch this is the pubic tubercle this is the pubic symphysis and let's say this happens to be the pubic bone that is going to be present right this is the objective now right in the center that you will see is going to be your linea alba right now linea alba is basically nothing but an amalgamation or i can say the component where the two rectus abdominis muscles are going to meet and where the rectus abdominis muscle is going to meet with the lateral abdominal wall muscles that is going to be your linea semilunaris right so for the sake of understanding if i simply mark it down for you this happens to be your linea alba and this happens to be your linea semilunaris this happens to be your linea semilunaris right now you need to understand that this is going to be the lateral component just for the sake of understanding right now you have the abdominal wall muscles now in order to understand hernia one of the most important thing is you need to understand the build of the abdominal wall now if i just quickly go through the abdominal wall component the outermost layer of the abdominal wall that you are going to see is going to be skin so let's say this is the representation of the skin that you are looking at right now right below the skin what do you have you are going to have the subcutaneous fat 
Now this subcutaneous fat in the abdominal wall is divided into two different layers. What are the two different layers? You have the superficial campus and under beneath you have the fibrous layer which is called as the scar pass. So you have the campus layer and then you have the scar pass which are going to be present. Right? Now below the level of scar pass you will have the lateral and the medial abdominal wall muscles. Now for the sake of understanding what I am going to do is this is going to be your medial part and the other ones are going to be your lateral parts which are present. Now let's say what are the lateral abdominal wall muscles that you have. The lateral abdominal wall muscle that you have is your external oblique muscle. Then you have the internal oblique muscle. Then you have the transverse abdominus wall muscle. right? And in between you have the rectus abdominus wall muscle or the rectus abdominus muscle on the either side. The same is going to be present on the other side as well. You have the external oblique muscle, you have the internal oblique muscle and the transverse abdominus muscle. Now you will see the external oblique muscles, muscle fibers, they are oriented in a manner as if you are putting the hand in the pocket. So this is how this is how the orientation of the external oblique muscle will be the hand, like you're putting the hand inside the pocket this is the same the same for the opposite one as if you're taking out the hand from your pocket that is going to be your internal oblique muscle so the orientation of the external oblique muscle is going to be inward that is as if you're putting the hand inside the pocket the orientation of the external abdomen your internal abdominal muscle is going to be in the exactly opposite direction as of your external oblique right so the internal oblique muscle fibers will be in an orientation as if you are taking your hand out of the pocket then you have the transverse abdominus wall muscle let's say this happens to be your transverse abdominus wall muscle so the on the either side you will see this presence of the transverse abdominus wall muscle so you have the internal oblique, you have the external oblique, you have the transverse abdominus wall muscle and then you have this is your rectus abdominal wall muscle, right? So this is the rectus abdominus muscle, right? So the rectus abdominus muscle is called as the central compartment and the other three muscles are called as your lateral compartment, right? So when you look at these muscular components that we have put across here, you will notice that the aponeurosis of all these components. So this is your external oblique aponeurosis which is present which is going to have a single leaflet. This is going to be a transverse abdominus aponeurosis which is present. So external oblique aponeurosis and the transverse abdominus aponeurosis which is present. Now the internal oblique muscle, the internal oblique muscle that is present has got the aponeurosis but it will divide into two different leaflets, the anterior leaflet and the posterior leaflet. So this is the internal oblique muscle. It will have two different leaflets which are going to be present. That are the two different leaflets which are going to be present. Now you will notice that the anterior leaflet is going to combine with that of, it is going to combine with that of the external oblique muscle. And when it combines, it gives rise to, it is going to give rise to the anterior rectus sheet it gives rise to the anterior rectus sheet that is present in the same way you will notice the aponeurosis of that of the transverse abdominus wall muscle combines with the posterior leaflet and this time it is now going to give rise to the posterior rectus sheet right so the anterior rectus sheath and the posterior rectus sheath in the center when they meet, that point where the anterior and the posterior rectus sheath are meeting, it is called as the linea alba. And the point where the external oblique, internal oblique and the transfer abdominus upon neurosis are combining and then going to form the rectus sheath, that line is called as the linea semilunaris line. Now for the sake of understanding, this is what we call it as the linea semilunaris. And this line which is present right in the center where the two rectus abdominus muscle wall are meeting, this is what we call it as the linea alba line, as simple as that. Then you have a fascia that is going to run throughout, right? And that is going to be your transverse salus fascia. So this is the fascia which is going to be running throughout the abdominal wall. Below the transverse salus fascia, you have a pad of fat and this is what we call it as the preperitoneal pad of fat. 
this is what we call it as the preperitoneal part of fat and below the preperitoneal part of fat this is what we call it as the peritoneal layer and under the peritoneum you will have the intra abdominal cavity right now this orientation we have to keep it in order to understand any form of hernia just for the sake of understanding i am labeling it the outermost is going to be skin then you have the campus this is superficial campus layer below that you have the scarpa this is the scarpa that is present this is your external oblique muscle this happens to be the internal oblique muscle this is your transverse abdominus muscle this is your fascia transversalis this happens to be your preperitoneal part of fat this is your preperitoneal fat and the last one that you see here is going to be your peritoneum this is your peritoneum and this happens to be your rectus abdominis muscle this is your rectus abdominis muscle this happens to be your posterior rectus sheath this happens to be your posterior rectus sheath and above that this is your anterior rectus sheath this happens to be your anterior rectus sheath this happens to be your anterior rectus sheath and then when you look across this this is your linea alba and this happens to be your linea semilunaris this happens to be your linea semilunaris right so you can see every single component is being divided and laid across you so that you will be able to understand theek hai so iska jo pura concept hai na is pure concept mein aapko ye yaad rakhna hai ki jo abdominal wall muscles hain जो डिवाइडेड है लैटरल एब्डोमिनल वॉल मसल जो यहाँ पे और सेंट्रल एब्डोमिनल वॉल मसल लैटरल में तीन मसल्स हैं कौन कौन से हैं एक्सटर्नल ऑब्लिक इंटरनल ऑब्लिक ट्रांसफर्स एब्डोमिनस सेंटर में कौन से रेक्टस एब्डोमिनस वॉल मसल अब जो आपका एक्सटर्नल ऑब्लिक मसल है एज इट इज रीचिंग द मिड लाइन इट विल गोइंग टू अपोन यूरोटिक टिश्यू ठीक है अपोन यूरोस इज नथिंग बट अ फाइब्रोटिक इट्स लाइक अ फाइब्रस टिश्यू दैट इज प्रेजेंट राइट नाउ दैट फाइब्रस टिश्यू इज गोइंग टू कंबाइन विद द एंटीरियर लीफ ऑफ द इंटरनल ऑब्लिक मसल एंड इट फॉर्म्स द एंटीरियर रेक्टस शीट पॉस्टीरियर रेक्टर शीत किससे बनेगा जो पॉस्टीरियर लीफलेट ऑफ द इंटरनल ऑब्लिक एंड ट्रांसफर एबडोमिनस टुगेदर दे फॉर्म दी पॉस्टीरियर रेक्टर शीत सो आंटीरियर रेक्टर शीत रेक्टस एबडोमिनस मसल उसके नीचे पॉस्टीरियर रेक्टर शीत उसके नीचे फेशियर ट्रांसफर सैलिस उसके नीचे प्री पेरेटोनियल पार्ट ऑफ फैट और लास्ट में पेरेटोनियम राइट नॉ दिस इज यू सी एज द होल कॉम्पोनेंट ऑफ द एबडोमिनल वॉल मसल ठीक है now the reason i'm telling you this is if you are oriented with the abdominal wall muscle everything and anything that we talk about in terms of hernia will become absolutely crisp and easy to understand so coming back to our component of inguinal hernia so we now know what is this linea alba is what is this linea semilunaris is iske aage aur bhi concepts hai ki arcuate line kya hota hai uske bare mein baat karenge spigelian hernia kahan se nikalta hai uske bare mein baat karenge all that is again in great detail it is explained in our medded app but abhi ke liye we'll concentrate on inguinal hernia per se now in order to understand this for the inguinal hernia maan ke chalo ki ye aapka external oblique muscle right this is the external oblique muscle which is going to be present now external oblique muscle as it is nearing the midline it will now convert into a fibrotic tissue now this fibrous tissue is going to be your external oblique aponeurosis aur ye jo external oblique aponeurosis hai it is going to adhere to the anterior superior iliac spine form a tuft of band it is going to form a tuft of band continue towards the pubic tubercle and then it is going to combine with the rectus abdominis muscle as we all know that this component that is present ye wala jo part hai it is by your rectus abdominis muscle so this is nothing but your rectus abdominis muscle now you will see you will notice ye jo aponeurotic tissue hai which you can see here external oblique aponeurosis as it is nearing the rectus abdominis wall muscle as you can know the external oblique aponeurosis is going to combine with the internal oblique aponeurosis together they will form the anterior rectus sheath and they will be covering the anterior border of the rectus abdominis wall muscle now you need to understand that ye jo external oblique aponeurosis hai it is getting toughened it is becoming a band and that band is getting attached ye jo band hai it is getting attached 
to the anterior superior iliac spine that is present here and the pubic tubercle that is going to be here. This is your pubic tubercle. ठीक है तो वॉट हापन्स इज जैसे ये एक्सटर्नल ऑब्लिक ओपोनियर से कनेक्ट करते हैं इन दोनों के बीच में ये जो टफ एंड पार्ट को या इंग्वाइनल लिगमेंट बोलते हो एंड देन इट टर्न बैक इट्स लाइक अ पेपर रोल दैट इज गोइंग टू अकर सो यू विल नोटिस दिस एक्सटर्नल ऑब्लिक ओपोनियर एज इट कम्स डाउन इट इज गोइंग टू रोटेट बैकवर्ड्स सो इट कम्स इन दिस पर्टिकुलर मैनर एंड देन इट इज गोइंग टू रोटेट बैकवर्ड्स नाउ द मिनट इट रोटेट्स बैकवर्ड्स इट इज नाउ क्रिएटिंग लाइक अ हम्प और द हंच दैट इज प्रेजेंट हियर ये जो आपका बैकवर्ड रोटेशन आप देख रहे हो दिस इज नथिंग बट योर सुपर फेशियल इंग्वाइनल रिंग और कुछ नहीं ठीक है तो एक्सटर्नल ऑब्लिक ऐसा है एंड इट इज टर्न बैकवर्ड लाइक दिस इफ आई हैड अ पेपर आई हैव शोन लेट्स टेक दिस इज अ पेपर ये एक्सटर्नल ऑब्लिक अपॉन योर रॉसेस है एंड इट इज गोइंग टू टर्न बैक लाइक दिस द मिनट इट टर्न्स लाइक दिस यू सी देर इज दिस स्पेस दैट इज क्रिएटेड अब इस स्पेस के थ्रू यू कैन सी दैट एनीथिंग कैन पास थ्रू राइट इट्स लाइक अ टनल दैट इज क्रिएटेड एंड यू कैन सी माय पेन इज पासिंग थ्रू एंड दिस इज हाउ यू विल सी दैट द कंपोनेंट ऑफ द इंग्वाइनल कैनाल इज गोइंग टू बी फॉर्म सो जो आउटर पार्ट जो आप देख रहे हो दिस पार्ट दैट यू आर एबल टू सी अक्रॉस यूर इफ आई जस्ट हाईलाइटेड अक्रॉस दिस इज गोइंग टू बी योर सुपर फेशियल इंग्वाइनल रिंग दिस इज गोइंग टू बी योर सुपर फेशियल इंग्वाइनल रिंग राइट नाउ इन द सुपर फेशियल इंग्वाइनल रिंग दिस इज द कॉम्पोनेंटल एंट्री दैट यू नीड टू अंडरस्टैंड वील टॉक अबाउट इन डिटेल आगे चल के इसके बात करें ठीक है Now, superficial inguinal ring के साथ साथ you will need to understand that the inguinal ligament that is present at the level of the pubic tubercle it is going to turn backwards as well. It is going to take this turn and it continues and then it adheres to that of the pubic tubercle that is present and this part of the inguinal ligament which is turning on to the pubic tubercle and going backwards it is creating this fan shaped structure that is present. It is going to be projecting as a fan shaped structure which is going to be present across here and this fan shaped structure that you can see which has been formed if i just mark it down for you ye jo new part that has been developed here this is divided into two components one that i'm highlighting in orange and another one as it is getting adherent to that of the pubic arch right this part is what we call it as the lacunar ligament this is what we called as the lacunar ligament and one that is getting adherent and continuing this is what we call it as the cooper's ligament this is what we call it as the cooper's ligament right so this is the basic objective how the superficial inguinal ring is going to be formed Now, if you have understood this, that how the superficial inguinal ring is formed, let's understand how the deep ring is going to be formed. Now, if I just give you the objective, let's say we are saying that this is the external oblique muscle, right? And this is the orientation of the external oblique muscle that we are trying to put. So, this is the external oblique muscle that you have. this is the external oblique muscle that you have and along with this external oblique muscle let's say this happens to be the aponeurosis of the external oblique muscle that is present so we are telling you that the external oblique aponeurosis that is present which is connecting at the anterior superior iliac spine as well as pubic tubercle as it is providing in this component that is present on the medial side it goes and then turns like this right so this is what we are trying to tell you that it is arching out fibers which is creating a tunnel and in that tunnel you will be able to see the structures passing right right so this is the first thing that we have already discussed about the external oblique muscle right so this is the external oblique muscle and this is the external oblique aponeurosis that is present which is turning on itself it is rotating on itself to form the superficial inguinal ring right now you need to understand below this you have the internal oblique muscle right you have the internal oblique muscle that is present 
but internal oblique muscle will not have the area that is covering the same component, right? So what will happen is the external oblique muscle is like this, okay? Internal oblique muscle that is present, uh, the internal oblique muscle is behind this, but it is in the opposite direction. But there is nobody who is covering this area where the inguinal ligament is arching out. So this is empty, right? Then you have the transverse abdominus which is on the same side. So external oblique, internal oblique and then you will see that there is another layer which is present that is transverse abdominus muscle. And at this component, uh, all these three muscles are leaving a space. So this is your external oblique muscle that we have highlighted. So this is your internal oblique muscle that I am showing you. Again, there is nobody who is covering the external oblique aponeurosis area that is present, right? This will have its own aponeurotic tissue which is present, which is going to merge with itself. So this is your internal oblique aponeurosis. Then you have another muscle that is your transverse abdominus wall muscle. That is going to be your transverse abdominus wall muscle which is here. This is your transverse abdominus wall muscle. Again, in the same capacity, you will notice this is your transverse abdominus muscle. Again, it will have an aponeurotic tissue. Again, this is going to merge with this and together they form the anterior and the posterior rectus sheath. That's what we have decided. But what you have to understand that there is nobody who is actually covering the area of the aponeurosis which is present along with that of the external oblique muscle. So what is happening just inside this you have your fascia transversalis. So you see this is the fascia transversalis which is present throughout right. So if I give you an objective so the innermost layer that you see this is the fascia transversalis which is going to be present. So this is the fascia transversalis which is continuous throughout. You will notice within the fascia transversalis, there is a defect that is present. The defect in the fascia transversalis. The defect in the fascia transversalis is what we call it as. The defect in the fascia transversalis is what we call it as the deep inguinal ring. Right. So you have the external oblique aponeurosis. You have you have the external oblique aponeurosis and then you have the fascia transversalis, right? External oblique aponeurosis is forming like this. It is like your inguinal, your superficial inguinal ring and the inguinal canal that is forming and just behind it. All that you need to understand, you need to understand that this is your external oblique aponeurosis which is turning backwards to form the superficial inguinal ring and the inguinal canal and posteriorly it is only covered by fascia transversalis and there is a defect in the fascia transversalis and that defect is your deep inguinal ring, right? So what is going to happen is you will see that there will be structures which are going to enter through the superficial inguinal ring, travel in the inguinal canal and enter into your deep inguinal ring and then it will go across here, right? So all in all, when you look at the inguinal canal, the inguinal canal can be depicted as the component which is here. This let's say is the external oblique aponeurosis. This is your superficial inguinal ring. Let's say this happens to be your fascia transversalis. There is a defect in the fascia transversalis. That is your deep inguinal ring and it continues across. As simple as that. Right. So the simplest explanation or the easiest way to understand. The easiest way to understand that this is your external oblique aponeurosis which is nothing but your inguinal ligament. which is folding to form superficial inguinal ring. This happens to be your inguinal canal, right? And above that, what do you have? You have the fascia transversalis. Above this, you have the fascia transversalis and this happens to be your deep inguinal ring. Now, this is the simplest explanation that you need to remember with respect to inguinal canal. Now, if you understand this, nothing more is required in order to decode the components of the inguinal hernia, as simple as that. Now, what do you mean by this? Now, let's understand it this way. So, we have the same component that we are talking about. Let's say this is the external oblique aponeurosis. This is the superficial inguinal ring. I am saying this happens to be your deep inguinal ring. This is your fascia transversalis which is running all across here. 
above the fascia transverse salis what do you have you have the peritoneum that is present all across here right now what passes or what goes through this inguinal canal the first thing you will notice there's a structure now specifically we're talking about males from the testes you will see this is the vast difference which is going to enter the vast difference enters to the superficial inguinal ring travels into the inguinal canal exits in the deep inguinal ring takes a u-turn and then goes all the way across here and then what happens is if you take this as the representation of the bladder in the center right now at the level or the neck of the bladder you see there's a fibromuscular gland that is present this happens to be your prostate gland right and at the prostate gland, you will notice that you have these seminal vesicles that are present on the either side. So these are the seminal vesicles. These are the seminal ducts that are going to present. Now this vast difference is going to travel all the way, goes behind the bladder, goes behind the bladder, combines with the seminal duct. Together they form the ejaculatory duct, opens into the prostate gland, into the prosthetic urethra. And that opening in the prosthetic urethra is what we call it as verum montanum. And that's enough, it in fact, a landmark when you're doing an endourology procedure to know you are in prosthetic urethra, as simple as that. Now, same thing in males and females, it is going to vary. In males, I've told you that it is going to be your vast difference. In females, it is going to be the round ligament. Now, along with that, you will see there is a nerve that is also going to flow across here. This is going to be your ilioinguinal nerve. The nerve that goes into the inguinal canal, this nerve is what we call it as the ilioinguinal nerve. This is your ilioinguinal nerve, as simple as that, right? Now, this is the orientation that you have to keep that the superficial inguinal ring, the deep inguinal ring, the content that is going is going to be vast difference in the ilioinguinal nerve. The vast difference takes a nice hairpin back loop and goes behind the bladder, combines with that of your seminal vesicles together to form an ejaculatory duct, opens into the verum montanum or opens into the prosthetic urethra by a ridge. It's like a, it's like a elevated ridge that is going to be present in the prosthetic urethra and that is what we call it as the verum montanum, as simple as that. Now, if you've understood this, now the basic debate is how do you differentiate between the indirect inguinal hernia, so we'll be talking about the indirect inguinal hernia. Talk about the indirect inguinal hernia and the difference between the direct inguinal hernia. Now the basic difference that you need to understand between these two, that is your direct and the indirect inguinal hernia, is the factors like the entry point, their exit points, how is the anatomical orientation is going to be present, what changes, what does not change, all that you have to take into picture. So I'm going to explain you that in an elaborate fashion, right? So our objective is to understand the difference between the indirect and the direct inguinal hernia in that particular perspective. Now, in the indirect inguinal hernia, if you take this as the representation of the inguinal canal, this happens to be your superficial inguinal ring. You need to understand that we are near the rectus abdominis wall muscle. So this is the rectus abdominal wall muscle. This happens to be the rectus abdominal wall muscle that is going to be present, right? Now on the posterior surface, you have the deep, that, that is deep inguinal ring, this is your fascia transverse salis, which is going across here. Above this, you have the peritoneum that is present. So we have discussed this happens to be the peritoneum that is there. You should also know the content that is present here. This is the vast difference, which is going across here, turning and making a U-turn across here, right? I'm not much worried about the nerve, but then just for the sake of understanding, in fact, this is the nerve which is usually or most commonly damaged in an open inguinal hernia surgery, that is your ilioinguinal nerve, right? Now, the same component can be depicted here as well. You have the superficial inguinal ring. You have the superficial inguinal ring. 
this is the deep inguinal ring this is the fascia transversalis this happens to be the fascia transversalis that is present above this you have the peritoneum that is present across here this is the peritoneum as i told you that in the center you have the rectus abdominis wall muscle that is present here so this happens to be the rectus abdominal wall muscle you have the same component as we have been discussing this happens to be the vas deferens goes into the inguinal canal takes a hairpin loop and the nerve that is going to be present is your ilio inguinal nerve that is going to accompany this right now there is a blood vessel that is going to be popping out uh, from the external iliac artery that is going to be your inferior epigastric artery so this is the orientation of the inferior epigastric artery right so this happens to be the orientation of the inferior epigastric artery right so these are the more or less components that you need to understand with respect to inguinal canal now the questions that they usually ask you or the concepts that we have to emphasize on number 1 where is the entry point for the direct and indirect inguinal hernia where is the exit point what is the sac made up of what is the content that you expect and we have to know the relation relation between the cord that is the vas deferens cord and the sac relationship of sac cord and the sac another thing that you need to know is the relation between the inferior epigastric artery and the neck of the hernia relationship between the inferior epigastric artery and the neck of the hernia these are the components that we are going to discuss in terms of comparison now baat aayi entry point ki to indirect inguinal hernia mein entry kahan se hogi now you need to understand ki over a period of time let's say there is a bowel that is present here और ये जो बावल है यहां पे वो प्रेशर एक्सर्ट कर रहा है राइट द बावल दैट इज प्रेजेंट हियर इज एक्सर्टिंग प्रेशर एट दिस पर्टिकुलर साइड नाउ बिकॉज देर इज अ डिफेक्ट इन द फेशिया ट्रांसफर सैलिस अंडर दैट प्रेशर द फेशिया ट्रांसफर सैलिस विल नाउ टेंड टू डिफॉर्म राइट यू विल नोटिस दैट द फेशिया ट्रांसफर सैलिस व्हिच इज प्रेजेंट हियर इज नाउ गोइंग टू गेट डिफॉर्म राइट अंडर दिस प्रेशर the fascia transfer salis is going to get deformed now when i say deformed you will notice that the sorry the peritoneum is going to put pressure i mean the along with the peritoneum it is going to put pressure across here so you will notice that the peritoneum which is present here will now tend to sink right just for the sake of understanding i'm just taking the nerve out the peritoneum here will start to sink in this area that is in the defect of the fascia transfer salis now why it is sinking it is because the bowel that is present here is exerting pressure now under the influence of this bowel under the influence of this bowel you will notice the bowel will also go and sit across in fact this forms the content of the hernial sac this is going to form the content of the hernial sac now as the pressure continues to increase as the bowel is going to exert more and more pressure you will notice you will notice that this sac which is entered into the deep inguinal ring as it is entered into the deep inguinal ring as it is entered into the deep inguinal ring you will notice this is your deep inguinal ring you will notice that the peritoneum which is being pushed across will travel along with this line it will travel through the inguinal canal and now it is going to pop out through the superficial inguinal ring along with the bowel that is present across here so see so the bowel is also going to travel and the content is going to pop out through that of the superficial inguinal ring so i can say that in an indirect inguinal hernia the entry is from the deep inguinal ring the entry is going to be from the deep inguinal ring 
and the exit is from the superficial inguinal ring. The entry is from the deep inguinal ring, the exit is from the superficial inguinal ring. Now the same component, when you look at the deep, I mean the direct inguinal hernia, in the direct inguinal hernia, you have an anatomical weakness. Now what is that anatomical weakness? That anatomical weakness, that anatomical weakness is in this triangular area that you are able to see, right? This area is the anatomical weakness, which is also called as the Hassel-Bax triangle. This is what we call it as the Hassel-Bax triangle. Now you can see the component of the Hassel-Bax triangle. It is formed by the lateral border. This is formed by the lateral border of the rectus abdominis muscle. On the other end is formed by the inferior epigastric artery and the other component is formed by the fascia transversalis right it is the inguinal ligament you can say that the inguinal ligament forms the another end of the component here right so what is going to happen is this area is considered to be weak so what is going to happen let's say there is a bowel that is sitting across here let's say there is a bowel that is present across here and is exerting pressure now as it exerts pressure the same thing which has happened in the indirect inguinal hernia it is going to repeat itself but this time there will be a tinge of difference right so what is going to happen under the influence of the pressure that is present you will notice that the fascia transversalis that is present here is now going to budge it is the fascia transversalis which is going to budge along with the fascia transversalis you will notice the peritoneum is going to go into this budge now all this is happening because of the bowel or the component that is exerting pressure here so you will notice that the bowel is also going to go into this area now as it is sitting at this point it is exerting more pressure now as it is exerting more pressure you will notice that it is now going to create some space right so what is going to happen we'll just take the objective here we are not going to change anything it's just the perspective that you need to understand that what is going to happen now as the pressure continues to mount as more and more pressure continues to mount you will notice that the fascia transversalis which is present here is now going to pop out from that of the superficial inguinal ring along with that you will also notice you will notice that the peritoneum is also popping out along with the peritoneum you will notice that the bowel is also going to come out so the bowel is coming out through that of the superficial inguinal ring but see where is the entry it is from the Hasselbeck triangle it is going again nothing changes per se you will see that the vast difference which is present here will take the same course it is at its own component the ilio inguinal nerve will also take its same course it is present across here so nothing changes everything remains in its own position it is how you see that the entry and the exits have been created now if you have understood this beautiful concept to differentiate between that of direct and indirect inguinal hernia everything is now a piece of cake all that you have to understand is going to be in a very simple competent con it's a differential that you need to understand right now what is the entry and the exit point as simple as that right so the entry point for that of indirect inguinal hernia is going to be your deep inguinal ring whereas it is going to be your posterior wall that is your hassel back triangle this is going to be your hassel back triangle right where is the exit exit for both of them is going to be your superficial inguinal ring both of them are exiting through that of the superficial inguinal ring nothing spectacular about it now what is the sac here now you see the outermost cover is what we call it as sac and the indirect inguinal hernia the sac is made up of in the indirect inguinal hernia the sac is made up of peritoneum the sac is made up of peritoneum whereas here in the direct inguinal hernia the outermost layer is the sac but sac is not made up of peritoneum because peritoneum is inside this is where you have the peritoneum so sac is made up of what the sac is made up of the fascia transversalis it is made up of the fascia transversalis and mind you fascia transversalis is actually a component of the abdominal wall muscle it is a component of the abdominal wall muscle right so what is the content the content can be bubble that is enterocele or omentum 
that is omentoseal as simple as that here also the content can be bowel that is enterocele if there is an omentum that is what we call it as the omentoseal now the biggest trick question that they'll ever ask you is the relationship between the cord and the sac right now when you look at this sir, this is the medial side this is the medial end and this becomes the lateral now this is the cord that is present right now you tell me sac in relation to cord is it medial or lateral you can see in the image itself it is lateral so you will notice that the sac is lateral to the cord here the sac is lateral to cord as simple as that on the other hand when you come to the direct inguinal hernia again this is the medial end this is the lateral end now you see here now the sac is present medial to that of cord right now here the sac is medial so this is the cord which is present here this is the cord and you can see the sac which is present here is on the medial side of that of the cord so i say the sac is medial to the cord here we can say the sac is medial to cord the sac is medial to the cord so what is the relationship between the inferior epigastric artery and the neck of the hernia neck is the narrowest point you can take as an entry also right now when you come across here if i draw the inferior epigastric artery which is here let's say this is where the inferior epigastric artery is going right now in the indirect inguinal hernia the entry point is the neck and the neck is at the direct um, direct inguinal ring or the deep inguinal ring now where do you find the deep inguinal ring medial or lateral to inferior epigastric artery lateral right you this is your inferior epigastric artery that is present here and this is what we are referring as neck so neck of the indirect inguinal hernia is present lateral to that of inferior epigastric artery whereas here you can see this is your inferior epigastric artery and this is the neck which is present medial and that's the most important trick question so i can say that the neck is lateral it is lateral to inferior epigastric artery here i can say that the neck is medial here we can say that the neck is medial to inferior epigastric artery the neck is medial to that of inferior epigastric artery right so this is the basic difference between the direct and the indirect inguinal hernia that we should be aware of in the context of understanding right now if you've understood all these concepts no nothing is important in terms of understanding if you understand that small annotated diagram that we have put right this is the easiest way to solve any question that you are going to come across in terms of hernia that is inguinal hernia another very important thing that you need to realize and understand that when you are talking about the hernias it's all about the defects how they are created how well you can understand and manipulate the defect is where you are going to understand the basic concepts of hernia now direct indirect hernia mein ek bahut important concept ye hai ki indirect inguinal hernia mein sac bana hua hai peritoneum ke sath lekin direct inguinal hernia mein sac bana hua fascia transversalis ke sath so in dono mein se kiska sac aap open kar sakte ho aur kiska sac aap open nahi karoge right so simple question is out of these two hernias that you have out of these two hernias which sac will you open and which you will not open right in the indirect inguinal hernia i'll open the sac because it is made up of peritoneum i'll do a herniotomy otomy matlab opening of the sac reduce the content plicate the sac and excise the redundant sac and throw back and repair the posterior wall direct inguinal hernia mein i will never open the sac kyun kyunki fascia transversalis se bana hua hai aur fascia transversalis kya hai it is one of the component of the abdominal wall muscle to agar main fascia transversalis ko incise karunga i am making the abdominal wall even more weaker so i'll never do that so i'll reduce it and then i'll take a purse ring suture and i will strengthen that defect nothing more and uske baad posterior wall ko fir se repair karna hai uske upar you have to put a nice proline mesh which is going to be a lightweight macro porous one hydrophobic not the hydrophilic that is the proline is used mesh lagaoge band karoge wapas aa jaoge and that's how you do your open repairs in your direct and indirect inguinal hernia repairs mein sac reduction is more important you need to make sure the posterior wall gets strengthened you will recreate the new hernia acha kabhi bhi whenever you do a patient let's say indirect inguinal hernia ka patient tha aapne repair kiya 
पेशेंट को फिर वापस रही है कर क्या अब क्या करोगे रेकरेंट इनडायरेक्ट इंग्वाइनल हॉर्निया बोलोगे कि रेकरेंट डायरेक्ट इंग्वाइनल हॉर्निया बोलोगे नाउ हेयर इज दी कॉन्सेप्ट वंस देर इज अ रेकरेंस नो इट इज नॉट क्लासिफाइड एज डायरेक्ट और इनडायरेक्ट बिकॉज यू हैव डिस्टॉर्टेड दी होल एनाटमी ऑफ द इंग्वाइनल केनाल दिस विल नाउ बी रेफर्ड एज रेकरेंट इंग्वाइनल हॉर्निया डायरेक्ट और इनडायरेक्ट का सवाल होता ही नहीं है इन दैट कॉन्टेक्स्ट चाहे आप डायरेक्ट रिपेयर करो इनडायरेक्ट रिपेयर करो जब रेकरेंस होगा रेकरेंस में इट विल बी कॉल्ड एज रेकरेंट हॉर्नियाज ओनली यू के नॉट नेम इट एज रेकरेंट इन डायरेक्ट और रेकरेंट डायरेक्ट हॉर्नियाज आज सिंपल एज दैट दैट्स द बेसिक कॉन्सेप्ट डू रिमेंबर ठीक है नाउ कमिंग बैक टू आर ऑब्जेक्टिव हियर नाउ इन दिस पेशेंट इफ यू लुक अक्रॉस हियर एज यू कैन सी हियर यू कैन सी अ प्रीवियस इंसेशन इज बीन मार्क्ड हियर प्रीवियस इंसेशन इज प्रेजेंट अक्रॉस हियर तो यहां पर वापस आया तो ये आपका रेकरेंट इंग्वाइनल हॉर्निया हो जाएगा ऑन द अदर साइड यू कैन सी इट इज द इंग्वाइनल हॉर्निया दैट इज प्रेजेंट नाउ हाउ डू यू नो बेस्ड अपॉन अब द मिनट द पेशेंट इज गोइंग टू कॉफ यू आर गोइंग टू सी दी स्वेलिंग इज गोइंग टू एक्सपैंड एंड दिस इज वॉट यू कॉल्ड एज एक्सपैंसाइल कॉफ इम्पल्स वन ऑफ द मोस्ट कार्डनल फीचर्स ऑफ हॉर्निया एंड देन सेकेंड इट शुड बी रेड्यूसिबल नाउ इफ आई प्रेस इट इट गोज बैक इन आई लास्ट द पेशेंट टू कॉफ अगेन बिकॉज द इंट्राइप डाउन प्रेशर इंक्रीज ड्यूरिंग द कॉफ इट री पॉप्स एंड दैट इज वॉट वी कॉल इट एज द पॉजिटिव कॉफ इम्पल्स और एक्सपैंसाइल कॉफ इम्पल्स दैट इज प्रेजेंट एज सिंपल एज दैट then you will see there is a hernia that is present here this will be called as ventral hernia now the epigastric umbilical and hypogastric hernia are called as ventral hernia so this is a component of ventral hernia now what is more interesting is this one right you see a case that has been presented here looking at the video can you tell me what hernia is this you see it's like very significant previous laparotomy scar is present patient is coughing the swelling is popping out through the scar it has to be your incisional hernia इंसेशनल हॉर्निया के लिए यू हैव टू मेक श्योर यू नो इट हैज गॉट मोर वाइडर डिफेक्ट लेस रिस्क फर्स्ट एंगुलेशन यू हैव टू रिपेयर इट सच ह्यूज हॉर्नियाज आई विल नॉट गो विथ लैप आई विल गो विथ ओपन रिपेयर स्मॉलर हॉर्नियाज आई विल गो विथ लैप लैप में वी डू समथिंग कॉल्ड एज आई पॉम इट इज इंट्रा पेरिटोल ऑन ले मैश रिपेयर अगेन पोजिशन ऑफ मैश वेरी इंपॉर्टेंट वॉच आउट द कंप्लीट वीडियो इन आर मेडेड एप यू विल सी दी होल डिविजन एंड द एक्सप्लेनेशन देर अक्रॉस ठीक है सो दिस इज अबाउट योर इंसेशनल हॉर्नियाज दैट आर प्रेजेंट ठीक ना so these are the basic concepts that i wanted to run for the inguinal hernia see hernia is again beautiful topic so much extensive topic is there if you feel anything more that you want to learn in terms of hernia specific hernias you can always comment it down i will take another session on the hernia just to make you oriented to that as well theek okay? hai now this session is dedicated only to understand uh the approach to the hernias theek okay? hai the videos were given for your orientation but again there's a lot more that we can discuss on hernia as well if you have any questions you can pop it down you can reach out to us on the instagram channel or you can reach out to me on my personal telegram channel anywhere you can comment on the youtube itself so that i can come up with a better explanation for your queries as well theek okay? hai so if anything is there any component that you want to go across here please let us know Until then, prepare well. Uh, the neat PG is right across the corner. We know the dates has been pre-poned. It's okay. Let them throw whatever they want to. We will only throw one thing that we know is the stronger punch. Uh, don't get disheartened. ये नहीं सोचना कि यार you know pre-pon हो गया pre-pon हो गया ठीक है. It's okay. We have already got enough amount of time. It's a good time for revision as well. And थोड़ा बहुत होना चाहिए ना कि वो enthusiasm, वो वो jitter that they NMC is known to create that. ठीक है. Don't worry about it. तो Just this, keep focusing. Yeah, exam will happen. Will happen. We will write it calmly. Okay. That's not about thinking. Not much. Not much discussion. Not much. Yeah. Or this. 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 Okay. So we'll we'll keep it to the point and that particular you know understanding. That if it can be, then a little calm approach. We will keep. Please continue to do your MCQs, previous year topics, concepts. Send in. Do notes. Revise. Do single source. Pay stick. Do. And we have laid out a huge. You know, uh, there's a video on the elaborate. planner that how do you want to approach for neat pg for a pre appointment that is also there do watch out that for your understanding as well all those bachas who are writing fmg again same thing don't lose your focus again it's going to be in june july we are going to be dedicatedly working towards it same strategy for you also do your mcqs dekho fmg bachcha you have to make sure that every day you are going to do 100 questions so that you get oriented to mcq start learning to approach the mcqs as well theek okay? hai so with that There's nothing much from my end as well. Uh, 
so if you have any questions always reach out uh, hi alam uh, i've got your message we will do appendix also next session parotid mein hoga parotid ke baad we will go ahead with appendix to so, all this appendix mein kaam karenge na bahut specific topic lenge acute appendicitis bahut common hai protocol for appendicular tumors theek hai how do you approach an appendicular tumor will be your next session we'll make sure that we we address all that you know gray areas where nobody wants to go we will go we will try to explore that particular site as well right so with that let's call off the session for today thank you so much uh, we'll resume back when you have right so take care read well prepare well uh, happy holi by the way which is going to be tomorrow so have fun do not zyada bhi nahi kar lena theek hai thoda consolidated fun theek hai again come back and revise read and do not stop until we are done with the point right thank you guys bye bye